Hi, welcome to Apex Math. Today we're going to look at how to add and subtract with fractions when they have positive and negative numbers on them. So we're going to make the assumption that you've already learned how to add and subtract whole numbers when they are integers, when they have positive and negative numbers. So for example, if we have 3 plus a negative 5, you've already learned how to solve this type of problem. Um, just to review, we look at which one of these two numbers is bigger without the sign. The 5 is the bigger number. So we're going to, since they're opposite signs, we're going to subtract the two numbers. So we're going to do 5 minus 3, which is equal to 2. And we're going to take the sign of the bigger number. Since the bigger number is 5, um, we're going to take the sign that the 5 had on it, which was a negative, so the answer would be a negative 2. If we had a negative 6 plus uh, 9, if we look at those two numbers, again, they have opposite signs, which means you subtract the two numbers. So we're going to take, forget about the signs for a minute, we're just going to subtract the two numbers, 9 minus 6 gives us 3. And so our answer is going to be 3, but then we have to decide what sign should the 3 have. And we look at the two numbers. The 9 is the bigger of the two numbers. So we look at the sign on the 9, and the sign was a positive, so the 3 is going to keep the sign of that number. So that's how we handle it when the two numbers have all opposite signs. When the two numbers have the same signs, negative 2 plus negative 5, we just add the two numbers together normally. 2 plus 5 is 7, and the sign gets carried along, so negative 7. Just like we, if we had a positive 2 plus a positive 5, we'd get a positive 7. So when the signs are the same, it's easy. It's just regular arithmetic, and the sign stays whatever the sign was to begin with. So how do we do it when we have fractions? Let's take a look at that situation. The rules don't change. The only thing that changes now we have to deal with the fact that we have fractions to deal with, and we have to decide which fraction is bigger. So let's say we have 2 thirds plus a negative 1 half. Well, so the first thing I notice is that these two fractions have different signs. So I know I'm going to subtract the two numbers. And I know when I have uh, two numbers, I take the bigger number and I subtract the smaller number. Well, two-thirds of a pie is bigger than one-half a pie. So I know I'm going to have to do two-thirds minus one-half. But since they're fractions, I have to change the fractions to have common denominators. So this is how I like to change my fractions. I like to set them up vertically and change their denominators. So I say, well, what does my common denominator need to be? Well, since 2 and 3 don't have anything in common, I can just multiply them. 2 times 3 is 6. So my new denominator is going to be 6. And then I say 3 times what gets me to 6? Well, that's 2. And then I multiply top and bottom by 2. 2 times what gets me to 6? Well, that's 3. So I multiply top and bottom by 3. So this becomes 2 times 2 is 4. And 1 times 3 is 3. So I'm going to subtract 4 6 minus 3 6. And 4 6 minus 3 6 is 1 6. Now I have to decide what sign do I take. Well, again, since these were alternate signs, I know I look for the bigger number. The bigger number was 2 thirds. So I'm going to choose the sign that went with the bigger number. The bigger number had the sign positive. So the sign that I'm going to keep is going to be a positive. So the answer is going to be positive 1 sixth. Let's do another one. Let's say we have negative 2 fifths 
plus negative 3 tenths. In this case, you notice both signs are the same. Now I know when I add fractions and both signs are the same, it's really easy. I just have to add the two numbers and keep the sign the same. So all I have to do is add 2 fifths and 3 tenths. So I'm going to set them up vertically. Uh, oops, that should be a 2 on top there. So I'm going to make that a 2 fifths and a 3 tenths. I have to change the denominators. If I look, I can see that my common denominator is going to be 10 because 5 goes into 10. So since 5 goes into 10, I can use 10 as a common denominator. So this guy isn't going to change at all. So he's going to remain 3 tenths. This guy has to change from a 5 to a 10. So if I multiply 5 times 2, I get 10. What I do to the bottom fraction, I must also do to the top. So 2 times 2 becomes 4. Now I'm going to add these two together. 4 tenths plus 3 tenths makes it 7 tenths. And since both the signs were the same, I carry the sign along. So you just have to remember the same rules you applied when you were doing your integers without the fractions, you're going to use those same exact rules with your fractions. And we'll do one more. This time we'll use mixed numbers. And maybe we'll do a subtraction this time. So let's say we have 2 and 1 fourth minus, uh, let's see, a negative 2 and 1 fourth minus a negative 1 and 2 uh, sixths. All right. So in this case, anytime you see a subtraction problem, you should always remember, keep, switch, change. Never do a subtraction problem. Always change it to addition problem by doing keep, switch, change. So we keep the sign of the first number. We switch the sign, the subtraction sign, to an addition sign and we change the sign of the last number to its opposite. It's a negative now, so I'm going to change it to a positive. So now I have negative 2 and 1 fourth plus 1 and 2 sixths. So now if I look at this problem, I've turned it into an addition problem. And if I look at the addition problem, I can see that it has two different signs. So since I have two different signs, a negative and a positive, I have to look at, I know I'm going to have to subtract the two numbers. So I take the biggest one, which is 2 and a fourth, and I'm going to be subtracting 1 and 2 sixths. Now don't get confused. I know I said I changed it to an addition problem, but it is still a subtraction problem because addition problems that have different signs are really subtraction problems. So now I'm going to change this one fourth into a new fraction. And six and four, they both have a common denominator of 12. So this becomes six times two gets me to 12. So this becomes 4 twelfths, and 4 times 3 gets me to 12, so this becomes 3 twelfths. So if I subtract now, I'm going to have 2 and 3 twelfths minus 1 and 4 twelfths. I picked a nice challenging problem here. I can't subtract 4 twelfths from 3 twelfths. So what do you do in this situation? Remember, you have to borrow from the whole number. 
So we go over here and we take 1 away from this 2, and it becomes a 1. And we add 1, and by adding 1, remember a 1 in fraction form is always the number over itself. So I add 12 twelfths to this 3 twelfths. So that's going to make it now 15 twelfths. So I have 1 and 15 twelfths minus 1 and 4 twelfths. And now I can subtract. So that is equal to 11 over 12. 15 minus 4 is 11. And I have 12. 1 minus 1 is 0. So I end up with 11 twelfths. And now I have to choose the sign. So which of these two numbers was bigger to begin with? Was it 2 and 1 fourth or 1 and 2 sixths? Well, it was 2 and 1 fourth. So I'm going to take the sign of the one that was bigger, which was the negative. So the answer is going to be a negative. So this is a great problem because it really uses all the different types of strategies that one needs to use. It uses subtraction, it uses the more complicated um, negative and positive, it uses mixed numbers when you have to borrow from the whole number. So uh, take a good look at this one, practice it again on your own and see if you can do it. And I hope uh, this lesson in Apex Math helps you with your homework. If you need any future lessons, let us know in the comments specifically what we can do to help you. And please like us uh, and subscribe to Apex Math.